How about something else? How about robocalls? I, I got an interesting email that noted a data point I was unaware of, and I'll just quote from the email. Denver's 720 area code originated the fifth most robocalls in the entire country last month. The data comes from a company called Transaction Network Services. So joining us from TNS, Transaction Network Services, Jim Terrell is senior director there, and we're going to talk about spam robocalls and 720 and more. Jim, thanks for being here. Absolutely. It's great to be on your show, uh, Ross. I appreciate the time. So every once in a while, and this happens more on business-to-business stuff than business-to-consumer stuff, I, I look at a website of a company that provides B2B kinds of services, and and I don't understand it because it's very technical and, and designed for people in your business. So can you please just tell us what exactly what TNS does? Because I don't entirely understand. Yeah, so we see we see and route uh, you know billions of calls every single day, and what we do is we provide uh, robocall protection services to some of the very largest carriers within the United States. Um, you know, an example is Verizon. So if you have Verizon Call Filter, uh, we're the analytics that sit behind that, and and then also provide the uh, the app that, that that does that. So we do that for you know several. Several different companies kind of think of us as the Nan- Norton antivirus, if you will, for, uh, for, for robocalling or voice calling. Interesting. And folks, if you've got questions about robocalls and telephone spam and all that, that you would like to get an answer on from, from Jim, a true expert, you can text me at 56690 and we'll get some listener questions into the conversation. So... Jim, let, let's start with this. I got a listener text ab- about 15 seconds ago. Hey, Ross, just before you got on the air, I got a robocall from the 720 area code. Let's get on with it. <laughs> so, so let's get on with it. Let's start with this very specific question. Why is our 720 area code such an enormous source or origin of these calls? Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, you know, large U.S. cities are always going to be the target of robocalls because, you know, at the end of the day, it's kind of a it's, – it's, it's really a, a numbers game for them. And so there are several factors that can lead to localized spikes, um, and, and, and scams can kind of, you know, cycle through a, a particular area. So um, in this instance, not surprising, um, it's something called, you know, what we call neighbor spoofing, basically kind of using the same – Three or or six digits to, to try to get you to to you know pick up and answer the and answer the call and so they're either you know they've either purchased you know a large number of, of telephone numbers from um you know from a from a VoIP service provider you know somebody that you know you know provides voice over internet which is you know kind of think of like Skype um, or uh, you know any of those that, that you know use that technology FaceTime is another way of, uh, you know, it, it's kind of a VoIP product, although it's inherently associated with, 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 with Apple anyway, but, um, it, they want you, they, 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 they want you to get, get you to pick up. And, and it's because, uh, you know, simply that, that, um, you know, you may think it's, you know, you know, an important call or, or a neighbor, or, you know, it could be the doctor calling you back. So that's, that's, that's why they're going to do that, that neighbor spoofing type, type of, uh, of tactic, the, the bad okay. actors are really smart people. So I'm I'm a data guy. I'm a I'm a numbers and statistics guy. And so y- your data shows that 720 has the fifth most originations of spam robocalls or did last month. And Denver is somewhere around number 19-ish in terms of American cities by population. So I'm trying to figure out how you get from number 19 in population and number five in robocalls. And one thing that occurs to me, but, but this is pure speculation, so you tell me whether uh, I'm on to something or I'm on to nothing at all. M- maybe some of these cities that have more people also have more area codes, and therefore the robocalls are distributed among more area codes, whereas here they kind of get funneled into just a couple. Yeah, that's that's correct. So, you know, in in Denver, I think it's just 303 and 720. You know, think of cities like, you know, New York City. Um, The whole city itself would get, you know, a lot of robocalls, but then we'll probably have, you know, five, six different, 
you know, particular area codes. So that, yeah, I think you're dead on with, with that. How, okay, how many, what percentage of robocalls that appear on your caller ID to originate from area code, let's just stick with 720, are actually originating in 720? geographically yeah yeah so i would say very very few what we found um from the trace facts that have been done you know within the within the industry is that typically the the fraudulent calls will um you know come in from a you know an overseas call center uh you know so think you know india you know the philippines etc and and they're just using u.s based numbers to uh to make those calls one listener is asking, so Den- Denver is getting an additional area code soon, and this has been in the works for a couple of years, and I think it's arriving this month. And one listener wants to know if if you think that part any measurable part of the reason we need to add an area code is companies buying up numbers within the existing area codes for these purposes, or, or are, is it not even a real number at all? Is like not just the seven two zero fake, like they're in the Philippines, but the whole thing? Is, like, is it all fake? What is it? Yeah, no, you're you're you're. So it's a little bit of both. I mean, obviously, you know, there's an you know, mobile phone numbers have been you know increasing, and mobile devices need a telephone number with it, right? So, uh, you know, that that leads to the exhaust of telephone numbers that are available in in three hundred three or seven two zero. Uh, the other portion is, is yeah, I, I, I mentioned it a little bit earlier, but your 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 uh, listener hinted that on. Yeah, they're they're bought, they're trying to buy legitimate tele. We we have seen, especially with the auto warranty scams, and I'm sure yeah, oh, everybody God, in, they're in annoying. Denver has got yeah, and what they'll do is is they'll buy legitimate telephone numbers, um, you know, from these from these providers, and 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 yeah, and and they'll spread. What they'll do is they'll try to look like a small business, and they'll spread, you know, maybe five to twenty calls uh, across hundreds of thousands of numbers. So you need hundreds of thousands of numbers um, to try to avoid the uh, to try to avoid the analytics engines because now you're now you're kind of blending in, and you're you know you're not you know you're not you're not using one particular number. That it then becomes fairly obvious, you know, you're making, you know, let's say a million calls from one particular number, and you're getting a lot of negative, uh, you know, negative feedback um, mm-hmm. you know, through the uh, through the application. If I spread it across, you know, hundreds of thousands of numbers, probably less likely to get, you know, feedback on any one particular number, and I can kind of look like legitimate business and and, and avoid the analytics. Um, you know, fortunately, you know, we've, you know, you know, we've got other factors that we look at that you know help us help us try to identify those and we'll continue to uh to get better with that we're talking with jim terrell from transition network services they offer spam and robocall protection to very large phone carriers their website is tnsi.com um listener wants to know if i silence my ringer or send a spam call to voicemail does that change my odds of getting more calls yeah, it actually it actually does. Um, you know, one thing that we've seen with with certain scams is that, that they look to be harvesting uh, telephone numbers, and what I mean by that is they want to know whether it's an active number or not. Uh, and and we know that those get sold on the dark web. So if you pick up and and, and you know, answer those calls, now you've just given them an indication that that's an active number. If you, if it goes to voicemail, they're not, you know, they're not as as sure as to whether that's a that's a real number. That's why. Again, you know, some of the data that we've seen is that, you know, 75% of Americans never answer calls to their wireless phone if, if, if they don't recognize uh, the number. However, you know, about that same percent, um, you know, would be more willing to answer a phone if it displayed, you know, the name, the brand name and a logo of, uh, of a company that they would recognize. Right. And I want to get to that branded calling in a second, actually. So one uh, a listener has a question similar to to mine um so the listener's question is where do the car warranty phone calls come from are those mostly india my question is are any any of the car warranty phone calls actually selling car warranties or are they just fishing for your personal data 
Uh, a little bit of both. Uh, you know, we've seen some that are fishing, and then, you know, some of them will actually give you uh, a car warranty. Um, however, you know, they'll oversell you on it, and when you try to, uh, uh, you know, make use of the warranty, uh, it's a lot less or a lot lower coverage than, than, than you would expect. Now, there are certain... There are certain companies like a car shield, for example, they're very legitimate. And, and you know, you've seen, you know, kind of Chris Berman on, on, on TV, um, you know, stout those or spout those. But so those are legitimate. But the majority of the robocalls that you're getting that are about car warranty, yeah, it's either fishing or or, um, you know, they're going to offer you some service if they get to you. And it's and it's and it's most likely you're overpaying for for what what, what they're going to uh, actually cover. Okay, so you, you uh, took a little, one small step a moment ago into this idea of a branded call. So can you please ex- explain what a branded call is and how, I know your company is, is very involved with building out this idea of branded calls, and, and so please tell us how that's going too. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, most people would recognize it with, with that wireless is a little bit different than wireline. Typically, the caller name pops up on the wireline on, in, 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 you know, your home phone, for example. Uh, on the wireless side, it doesn't. So uh, what we're doing is, is we're working with legitimate call originators, and we will display, you know, the brand name um, that comes along with their telephone number and, and location, um, so that, you know, if it's, you know, if it's, you know, like Angie's List or, you know, um, you know, Quicken Loans or anybody like that that's, you know, trying to, to call you back, then you can at least recognize, you know, who it is. And then event, and then uh, the other pieces that we're working on are, you know, being able to deliver a logo, being able to deliver, you know, what's the intent of the call. Obviously, we wouldn't del- deliver the logo or intent of the call if we hadn't verified that it was who they they actually said that they were because you know obviously that can that can lead into problems. So that'll you know that that type of you know feature and and we found that you know legitimate call originators end up getting uh, you know a better engagement rate with uh, with their cost you know with with the subscribers that have um, you know that they want to talk to, and and so they're they definitely see the value in it from you know from their from their agent perspective that you know that. That they're making less, that they don't need to make nearly as many calls, and they get you know a better engagement rate with you know people that want to answer the calls. So again, so if I were just as an example, right? Let's say uh, you know yep. getting a call from um, my insurance company, so it, it, it yep. would show up on my cell phone with something that not only said the name of my insurance company, but maybe their logo as well. Is that kind of what we're talking yep. about? Yep. Yeah, and then eventually, you know, what what the intent is of the call. So. You know, they may be calling you about a quote or they could be calling you about, um, you know, a, a claim that you filed, for example. So then you can kind of get with the severity uh, or, or, or urgency of the of the messages. So, like, you know, for example, it could be, you know, uh, you know, a good example, maybe like Home Depot. Right. Hey, your order came in. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if you're on if you're on the phone, um, you know, you know, on your show, it's like, OK, I get why they're calling. Uh, and I know that, you know, and I know that, um, you know, I probably don't want to pick that up. However, if it's like somebody like an Amazon Fresh, hey, I want to make sure that you're home that, that, so, so I can deliver your order, that has a little bit more, uh, you know, sense of urgency, if you will. And you're going to pick up that, you know, you're going to probably put the current call that you have on hold and, and you know, make sure that you, uh, you know, you respond. So that's really kind of what branded calling is all about. Okay, so h- how do you prevent that from being – you know, for, from being hacked and, and spammed and have a bad guy send out some, send out a, make a phone call and, and cause a Home Depot logo to pop up on your phone? Because obviously anybody can get the Home Depot logo. Yeah, so we're doing, so so what so what we're doing is, is we're making sure that we know that the, the call is actually coming um, from that particular uh, enterprise. So there's a couple of ways that we can do it, um, but it's, it's it's a matter of doing kind of a, you know, a, uh, call authentication, if you will, to say, yep, this really came, I know this came from Home Depot, I'm okay to display the logo and the name. If it's not from Home Depot, then I'm going to, then, uh, and, and I don't know who's potentially using that particular telephone number, I'm going to then deliver potential spam or, you know, maybe some other message along with that. All right, I got about one minute left. I'm curious, 
What is the current legal status of these various spam phone calls? Are they all illegal? Are they legal? If they're illegal, is it just unenforceable when they're overseas? What's the story? Yep, yeah. So, yeah, it's definitely illegal. Um, and, and the challenge becomes then, um, you know, a, a lot of them are, are overseas. Again, we see a lot of the data coming in from these, you know, smaller VoIP. They're typically smaller VoIP providers, people that you haven't heard of. Um, and that's why the FCC is putting in rules in place to, to make sure that they abide by, um, you know, certain call authentication Um framework that, that that's been enacted with uh you know w within the law and they have until the end of the month to uh to, to comply with that so we should see hopefully a little bit of reduction by the end of the month um although you know the, i will continue to work on the edges of that call authentication framework you know your your one uh listener said i could buy a legitimate telephone number and that's the case so that call authentication framework wouldn't work in that particular instance but again the analytics will, will, will kind of help with that fascinating we've been talking with jim terrell from transition network services their website tnsi.com i i wish you much success because i need you to have much success in stopping the scourge of robocalls not least from area code 720 thanks so much for your time jim yeah, thanks, Ross. Great questions from your listeners, by the way. Yeah, I got smart listeners. That's why I love this job. Thank you so much. We'll yeah. do it again.